event. Joining us for the rest of the hour and then into some overdrive today is Larry Pinckney uh, with BlackActivistWG.org. He also is the editor, uh, editorial board member of BlackCommentator.com, a great news site. And, of course, he is a veteran Black Panther Party there at its founding, the former minister of the interior of the Republic of New Africa, a former political prisoner, and the only American to have successfully self-offered his civil political rights case in the United Nations under the International Covenant of Civil and uh, Political Rights. And uh, he, had, of course, been a guest on PBS, you name it, and documentaries about COINTELPRO, how the government targets people uh, with dirty tricks, like having people get behind me and yell, kill Michelle Malkin, and the phone rings, and it's the Denver Post and national TV saying, why'd you say kill her? They had, it was all a setup, and luckily we had video, and it came out it was a setup. And then now, with Austin Gun Rally, they had somebody run up and cuss right behind the pro-gun people to then blame us. These are the tactics, and that, that, that's light, COINTELPRO. Um, thank you for coming to uh, Austin, Texas. Larry Pickney, it's great to have you here. This is a short segment, but I asked you, I said, what do you want to get into first? The wars, the scandals, the government running Al-Qaeda. You go, no, I want to talk about the Second Amendment first. And so let's talk about that, Larry Pinckney. Well, first of all, I want to thank you very, very much, Alex. It's a pleasure being here in Austin, Texas. It's a fantastic uh, job that all of you are doing. We're trying. It is fantastic. So let me just get right into it. As far as um, the Second Amendment is concerned, that is to say the right to defend ourselves, we're not just talking about bearing arms. We're saying the right to defend ourselves. It was a reason that uh, the Second Amendment came into being. It didn't happen by osmosis. We have to understand that if we are not able to defend ourselves, everyday, ordinary, black, white, brown, red, yellow people, American citizens, we, we are in deep trouble if the government, for example, the Department of Homeland Security, which has been gathering munitions, you name it. Well, who are they going to use those munitions and ammunition against? It's, it's not a foreign agency. It has to be against... The, the training manuals say it's for anybody that, quote, promotes the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And what does that tell us? Apparently, it tells us that the Constitution has been made null and void. It means anybody that wants a check on unlimited power is the enemy. Right, right. So... I, I wanted to, and I thank you for asking me, I wanted to begin by this, uh, at, this at this stage. Being a, 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 a one of the veterans of the Black Panther Party, the party was founded in October 1966 in Oakland, California. I joined the party in 1967 the following year. But however, I want people to remember this. By the end of uh, the 1980s, in fact, even before, frankly, the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense had been absolutely physically decimated murders by by and from the the federal government uh, i'm also talking about setups i'm talking about discreditation i'm talking about every vile vicious despicable tactic infiltrations infiltrations uh and and people died many many people died families were destroyed this is what we need to understand. I don't care what our color is, black, white, brown, red, yellow. We better all understand that we are in this struggle together. And if we are to survive, we'd better do it collectively, and we'd better do it together, and we'd better stop being played off one against the other. We don't have to agree 100% with every. With no, everybody. but if anybody has their rights taken, we all have our rights that taken. That is correct. That is absolutely Hang together, hang separate. That's right. And what we're going to do is we are going to be together because we are going to win this thing. As we said back in the day in the party, all power to the people. And we meant that not only figuratively, but quite literally. All power to the people. Yeah, how can you have so-called liberals today uh, who, who used to say, I don't think wrongly, you know, kill the, kill the pigs because uh, we need to wake the police up as well. Now they're, no, give, give, give the cops all the guns. We can't have them. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did, how did the... We're going to come back with Larry Pinkney. You can tell he's an amazing speaker in mind. We're going to be breaking it all down straight ahead, in, through, and beyond. I'm Alex Jones, your host.
Hi, Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link to see our daily specials. Here's an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas Midas Resources. We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is, we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation. Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will mail you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at Infowars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson the trusted name in precious metals. We are here. Thank you so much for joining us. Larry Pinckney, uh, been in the Black Panther Party since right after it was uh, set up, uh, helped found chapters in different parts of the country, was their you know, spokesman, and was targeted, uh, put in jail politically, even came out in Congress, uh, if my memory serves correctly, that he was set up politically. So an, an on-record former political uh, prisoner here with us, and what he was getting to, if he just joined us, is that they always sell the idea of let's just take one group's rights. And so they say, hey, let's take the Muslims' rights. And then now you hear it's for libertarians, conservatives, anti-war people, Tea Party, people that promote the Constitution. But notice the media only went with, oh, they went after conservatives and Tea Party. Now it turns out it was anybody promoting the Constitution. Oh, it was anti-war groups, not fake liberal fascist, but any real liberals. Folks, the terms mean nothing. If you want justice, then you want uh, basic checks and balances. And if you don't know history, ladies and gentlemen, for new listeners, we are becoming a tyranny. Now, Larry Pinckney, I don't want to rant here because I can, I can talk as well, but I want to hear what you have to say. You were saying a lot during the break uh, you know, the good report to people that you talk to people waking up everywhere, but uh, finishing up the point on the Second Amendment, on hang together or hang separate, uh, Larry Pinckney. You know, the fact is, is that if we do not know our history, Howard Zinn says this very well. He says, if you do not know your history, it's as if you were born yesterday. And if you were born yesterday, anyone can tell you anything who's in a position of authority, and you have no way of checking up on it. My purpose as a veteran of the party, as a, an activist continuing today in the year 2013, my purpose is to do everything that I can to wake people up, to get them to understand, all of us, 
that the power must rest with us collectively. Everyday black, white, brown, red, and yellow people. Everyday people. I was just saying to you during our break, Alex, and I'd like to say this on the air, that InfoWars has done and is doing an incredible job. I have received, and I say an incredible job, I'm talking about in terms of waking people up, making, getting people to think, critically think, just think for God's sakes, use your common sense, critically think. And InfoWars, it's about that. It's doing that. People, including myself, are deeply, deeply appreciative. Oh, no. We're all in this together. I mean, I have no future. My children don't. If you don't have a future, right. if your family doesn't have a future. I mean, it's really such a simple equation. We interviewed Professor Grip a few weeks ago out in L.A., a, a video interview that's free online for everybody. And he just said, look, it's the same thing. If I'm not free, you're not free. I mean, it's such a simple equation. And you see the divide and conquer and then you have to engage it sometimes in, hey, you've been divided and conquered, but it's still a group coming down on you because they've been programmed that that's how you get things done. And people think they're getting a power out of a group. How about a group that's into freedom, Bill of Rights, Constitution, due process, and the right of the people uh, to be armed? I mean, that is a fundamental right and the right of free speech. You know, you know, as Bush leaves office, the whole agenda just continues. What do you make of uh, Obama and his foreign policy uh, of putting al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria against countries that were actually stabilizing forces in their region. Well, the whole point uh, of drone man Barack Obama, let's call him what he really is, drone man Barack Obama, the whole point uh, of, of uh, Obama's policies really is to destabilize, destabilize uh, governments, countries. Now, why? Because if they can destabilize it, if Obama and his minions, drone man, can do this, then they have the pretext for going into those countries. And by the way, there are plenty of uh, Americans, everyday Americans, who die as a result of this. Whether they're in the U.S. military or whether they're just tourists trying to see another country, trying to acclimatize themselves to, to another culture. This... How do, and I'm trying to, to, to be very calm about this. Can you imagine being in Pakistan where every day a plane flies over and just blows up whoever they want illegally? Exactly, exactly. And the fact is, is that it's being done in our name, our name. And I call the left out about this, the so-called left, the so-called liberals, the so-called progressives. Where are you? What are you doing now? When G.W. Bush was doing this, you were out in the streets. Where are you now? Okay, Barack Obama drone man has taken this, he has extended the policies of Bush and exacerbated them. Let's stop being hypocrites. Let's be real. Let's come together collectively as a people. That's how I, that, that, that is my take on it. Well, I've talked to so many national security people who are even establishment, and they're like, look, these big corporations just want new wars to sell more bombs and to get resources for other corporations, and we don't even get the booty. And, and I wouldn't be for it if we were getting the booty. Right. But we're paying. So many guys go, we need to go into Iraq to get the oil. Oil prices went up. The truth is they went in because Saddam was over pumping to pay off his debts, driving down the price. Mm -hmm. We went to Iraq to jack the price up. Right, right. It's always the opposite. I was just saying on a program last week, uh, the host asked me, well, what do you think about the, uh, how do you deal with the corporate stream media news? I said, this is how I deal with the corporate stream media news. I look at it, I reverse it, and then I move forward to find the truth. I decipher it. It's like if someone is speaking Russian or French or German or Swahili or whatever, you have to decipher the language first. And this is how we have to handle this. The, 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 I call it corporate stream vomit, let's be honest, because that's what it is. It's meant to control Every day. And look at the messages, how they're anti-family, anti-male, anti-woman, anti-child. I mean, this is a group of crooks. Yes, and they are well-trained and well-funded crooks. They are criminals. It makes the mafia look like child's play. It really, really does. Because they've, they've all competed with each other in evil to develop the ultimate synthesis of scum. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a narrative. Alex, my brother, it's a narrative. It's a narrative that, that this corporate stream media puts out. I call them the propaganda arm of the government, of the corporate-owned government. They are this, this, this so-called news media, in quotation marks, propaganda arm. They, why, Hermann Goering uh, of, of World War II fame would be 
absolutely ecstatic with joy to see how so many people in this country and throughout the world, but in this country, have been programmed. And to accept that narrative, buy that narrative, forget their narrative. We must develop our own narrative. That's my next question, and we do that from history, common sense, research, not being lazy. Because right. even when you want to know the truth, it's hard to get at much less just being lazy and just accepting whatever you're told. Plus, the world's so busy, I don't blame people, but it's at your peril that you ignore this info. The narrative seems to be collapsing more and more, though, for the establishment Democrats and establishment Republicans. And uh, A, do you agree with that? And B, how do you expect them to try to then clamp back down and get control of the narrative? Absolutely, I agree with that. These uh, Democrats, Republicans, I call them Republicrats, uh, because they all feed from precisely the same trough. Okay, but absolutely I agree with that. The narrative, their narrative is being ch challenged and questioned and therefore is being broken down. But we've got a lot more work to do, a lot more work to do. However, the, 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 the monsters that we're dealing with, and yes, they are monsters. I'm not, uh, I, I understand that they're supposed to be human beings, but human beings can act in very monstrous ways. And that's what they do deliberately. Anyway, the point is, is that, we can expect that the uh, corporate stream media, the corporate government, Wall Street, the whole bunch of them, their gang, I like that, that term because that's exactly what they are, their gang, they're going to engage in all kinds of activities. They're going to have false flag events occurring constantly. Why? Because that diverts people's attention. It keeps people in fear. It keeps people divided. Expect this, brothers and sisters. Expect this. I had Bloomberg, two reporters, call me yesterday doing a big investigative report, and they kept going, why do you think the government might be involved? And I said, well, they've been involved in hundreds of events, and they didn't want to hear real events. They didn't want to see facts. I go, if somebody's done something over and over again, and then it fits the same narrative, and then they're covering stuff up, and these guys were ha handled by the FBI and CIA, blah, 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 blah. And then when the guy's in the hospital, they say that they've now admitted to it, and now there's a letter found in the boat. I mean, all, I mean, it's, and they, and they would, and, and they kept saying, well, we're going to say you said this, and they would say something I didn't say, mm -hmm. and go, is that fair? Is that fair for an hour? Mm -hmm. And I said, man, I can't do this anymore with you. Mm -hmm. I said, this is what I said. Mm -hmm. And they would go, but you, is it fair to say this? And they'd say back this other thing. Is it and, fair? And, and it was just that they were there to get a fake statement. Right. To, and they're listening right now right. to put it out there to make us look stupid. Right. And look, man, I don't have all the answers. I just know this government's run by a bunch of crooks, and it's getting worse. And all. And I kept telling the reporters, I go, do you really think you're safe living in a country run by a bunch of ruthless crooks? Do you really want to play games right now? Mm -hmm. And the fact is, as you were talking, as you were talking just now, Alex, I thought about the USS Liberty. How many people, how many people in this country are aware of the USS Liberty, okay? Tell them about it. The ship that was attacked, really, as a result of U.S. guidance by the Israelis, who were acting as proxies. Uh, this, 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 this was a ship that had all Americans on it. When I say all Americans, it was a U.S. Navy ship, okay? It was attacked. It was in international waters. It was attacked for over two hours. Many people on that, on, on that vessel were killed. Okay, this was at the bidding of whom? Of our own government. And I use the word own in heavy quotation marks. Now, if they'll do that, and they've done so many other things from the Pueblo incident in the 19, late 1960s to what occurred just a few years later with the USS Liberty to uh, what the Central Intelligence Agency and other agencies have done in New York, in, in Minneapolis, in Los Angeles. When I say what they have done, I'm talking about the tactics that they use to, to control and manipulate. Well, they go out and find mentally ill or low IQ people, give them money for years, then come give them real bombs, tell them to, I mean, they coordinate, they lead, they hatch the plans. And I was quoting the New York Times, the Bloomberg going, going, hey, it, here's New York Times admitting all the major terror plots were hatched by the FBI. Mm -hmm. Here's the headline. And they go, we're not going to discuss that. Why? Why? And I was like, well, then how am I supposed to? Right. I'm the conspiracy theorist. You've got groups that have done this over and over again. They're dangerous. I don't like messing with them, but it's got to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, justice demands it, and you've got these giggling reporters on the other end. And I'm like, hey, this isn't funny. Right. It's very dangerous, and it's very, abs it's absolutely necessary that we, the people, understand that it's affecting our very lives and livelihoods, for that matter. The fact is, is that if we don't pay attention to it, you know, I know I've heard the thing before, Alex, I'm sure you have. Oh, Jones is a conspiracy theorist. Okay, you know what my answer is to that? 
You, sir, madam, are a denial theorist. Okay, we've got, and, and that's part of that corporate narrative. Just keep people denying, just keep them running around like, you know, rats in a cage, like hamsters running across that wheel, and we can control them. It's time for us to stop being denial theorists. It's time for us to be critical thinkers. And most of the time, it's their narrative that they're trying to put in your mouth or my mouth. That's what they're trying Which to do. Which is constantly about. changing. What do you, why do you think all this stuff is coming out on Obama right now? I mean, I think it's because they've intimidated the press. Obviously, Obama's just kind of their puppet to be able to get their agenda through. And people think it's trendy and go back to sleep. It's the globalist agenda, like Bush, Obama. They're all just puppets of this, clearly. But uh, a lot of times they bring out scandals in the second term because the power structure doesn't want one group getting too powerful. But this, I think, I watched those hearings where those whistleblowers went public. They were scared. They were told to stand down. For some reason, they wanted that ambassador dead. We now know it was to get missiles to Al-Qaeda. Mm -hmm. And they think we're so dumb, they're going to have Al-Qaeda blow stuff up. And then, I guess, take our liberties because they're Al-Qaeda blow stuff up. And then they'll, I mean, I mean, do you think that's accurate or what do you think is going on? Well, the bitter irony when we speak of Al-Qaeda is Al-Qaeda is, in fact, what? It came into to being as a result of the United States CIA. On record. It's right on record. This is on congressional record. It is, it is all over the place. But how many people are cognizant of that? How many people know that the quote-unquote terrorists were groomed none other by none other than our so-called government, okay? And, and we are the victims, as well as people all over the world. And that's not even our theory. We know they were and protected, and so why do I get my rights taken? Right. I mean, this is the oldest trick in the book. Right, right. And as I said, Hermann Goering uh, and, and others in the, the Third Reich, and people go, ah, don't bring up the Nazis, don't bring up the Nazis, okay? Let's bring up um, uh, Benito Mussolini. He did the same thing. Soviets. Yes, let's bring, uh, and for that matter, let's bring up the um, U.S.-backed dictator uh, Francisco Franco. He did the same thing in Spain. He did false flags. Yes, all the time, all the time. So this is not an, an ideological thing. This is a people's real thing, and we better we better pay attention. Well, yeah, because even if real terrorists attack us, we you know we gut up, we deal with it. We don't give our rights up because right. of it. But when they blow something up and go, day one, give your rights up, 9-11, you'll never have rights again. It's the end of freedom in America. Well, even if they didn't do it, which the shows they did, you're trying to take my rights using a tragedy. Right. You know, you don't negotiate with terrorists. You don't give up your rights because of it. I mean, right there, there's no doubt that's what's going on. Absolutely. There is no doubt. I mean, uh, you, you know, if we give up our rights, what, then, then we have no right to freedom, to justice, to liberty, to any of those things. Why do you think these scandals are coming out now then? I think that thanks to, to what you are doing and others like yourself, um, I, I think that more and more the, 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 the corporate stream media and the corporate controlled government are finding themselves in a situation where they're being questioned and challenged. And I think we need to intensify that questioning and challenging. Well, the fact that's what they've been bemoaning. I think you're right. They've been saying there's all this new media and, and groups that we don't control. And, 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 and you know, people are pointing out that we said something different a week ago than we're saying now. Right, right, absolutely. And I smile not because it's funny, but it's so ludicrous. It is pathetic. And we, 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 I always say to, to, to sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters, let's keep some levity in this. Because if we don't have some levity, we'll go insane. I agree. And we're not going to go insane. We're going to keep some levity in this. And so I smile. And, and the more we, we look at what the tactics are of these people, they really haven't changed. They really haven't changed from the 60s to the 70s, the 80s. No, they don't change. They well, don't it's change. funny. Is they, they like are like obsessive compulsive. They do the same thing the exact same way. Right, right. Here's an example. And a lot of cops are actually waking up, and I don't want to play part of that balkanization, demonizing them, because that's what they want us to be, us against them. But the, the, they're trying to make police more and more corrupt, more and more authoritarian. And when a cop's all over the country, I'll walk up and say, why are you videotaping? And I'll be on the street corner. I go, well, you're 100 yards away. Am I interfering with you? Well, no, but I want your name and stuff. And I go, well, I want your name and stuff. And then I'll just laugh, and I'll go, come on, man, this is North Korea. And I've noticed then they'll start laughing too, realizing they've been told to do this, but it's so stupid. If you act afraid, then they like alert and take you to jail. But if you laugh and go, man, knock it off. Yeah. Stop, you know, this is ridiculous. Then they kind of click and go, yeah, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like cops were saying we couldn't hand out our magazines in downtown Austin. And I called them up, got the cops on the phone. My guys were down there and I... And I go, why are you doing this to America? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this to your family? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm like, yeah, I know. I listen to your show. I've been told to do this. 
Like, well, you go ahead and give that ticket, and I'm going to sue you. Mm -hmm. And so then they back off, but they already given some tickets. And then I go down there, and the cops are all, hey, let's pose with a photo. You're right. We don't like it. We're glad you stood up to us. We don't like to follow these orders. Well, you should say no up front. Right. You should say no like I did instead of just, I mean, in America, we can't hand out magazines during South by Southwest anywhere downtown. I mean, what's wrong with you? Right, right. And the fact is, is that, you know, all people, whether they call themselves police officers, whether they call themselves military, I don't give a zip what they call themselves. The fact of the matter is, is that we better begin from a standpoint of our humanity and our freedom. We better begin there and end there and keep it there. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants, fruits, vegetables, nuts, you name it. And the globalists have been going after gardening. They've been harassing people that have gardens in their front yards or their backyards. They've called for licenses for people to have gardens because you can't trust prisoners in the police state America to be able to grow their own food. That's why I've come to the realization that we need to become self-sufficient. You need to be informed. You need to have the Second Amendment to protect yourself. You need to be politically active to wake up others. You need to filter your water. But you also need to plant a garden. Even if you live in an apartment, you can do this. If you live in the countryside, obviously you can do it on a grand scale. There are so many green belts in areas uh, that humans don't even visit uh, nearby cities and in suburbs where people are now more and more planting their own little private gardens and meadows and off the side of the road. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda, and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest of times. The ARC All-in-One Seed Kit contains 70 varieties of 50,000 seeds of fruits, vegetables, medicinal, and culinary herbs. All ARC seeds are heirloom. Each type is labeled and sealed separately for ease of use and longevity. The Deluxe Emergency Seed Bank combines three of Emergency Seed Bank's top sellers, the Family Survival Emergency Seed Bank, the Medicinal Herb Seeds Pack, and the Culinary Herb Seeds Pack. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, and medicinal herbs and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. A little seed can grow a huge tree that produces fruit for up to 50 years. We have the best life bombs. That's what these are. We have the best weapons against death out there at the lowest prices waiting for you to lovingly plant them and lovingly grow them and lovingly eat them and share them with others. We will strike back against the New World Order and this is only one more initiative in our fight against them. So please join us at InfoWarsShop.com or you can link through at InfoWars.com at the InfoWars Seed Center. Now, Larry Pinckney, I've asked a bunch of questions here. We're going to go into overdrive in the next hour. Uh, and, you know, I've thrown out some stuff here. Uh, but what do you want to get into? Because I, I mean, obviously we can talk about a lot of stuff, but what do you want to get into? Well, I want to get into, uh, the, I, I want to remind people, all of us, that we are, one, we are the ones who ultimately have the power. We have to recognize this. As long, it's one thing, and it's extremely important to, to warn people. To That's why the system them. tells us we don't have power and right. flies around in big jets and red carpets and big giant buildings is to make us feel small. Right, right. And if we feel small, we feel, we feel powerless. We are not powerless, okay? I think that we need to understand, and, and, and some of the things... That's I, the key. That's what scares them. Yes. So we're going to get into that in detail? Yes. Because we're just telling people what's coming up. What else do you want to get into? Well, I'll follow your lead. No, man, I want to see what you wildcarded. Okay. What else do you want to get into? Okay, what I, what I would like to get into is I would also like to talk a bit about some, some, some possibilities of what we can be doing out there. 
I want to. I want to be very positive, or it's positive. Talk about solutions. Yes, solutions. So, well, I think it begins with the seed of the universe, like Gandhi said, is in all of us. And you know, the Bible says we're made in the image of the Creator. That, mm -hmm. That's 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 pretty that's pretty mm -hmm. heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. Humans we create, and and again, again, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, if you look in the eyes of a child, I don't care what color they are, you see the soul. It's the same thing, a beautiful soul, and it tears my guts out to see the persecution of the innocent and the persecution, the eugenics of the globalists. And I want the globalists to know, and I think they know this, you're never going to inherit all the great things that humanity is going to have if you try to take it from other people. The only way you're going to get anything is to try to give it to everybody else. That doesn't mean buy into the fake counterfeit of, well, they give everything you've got to the government to distribute it. That's the lie of control. I'm talking about if you don't want justice and goodwill. People ask, what do you stand for? Goodwill. I start with goodwill. Yeah, if, you, if I find out you're evil and you want to destroy me, make me your slave, I'm mean, man. I'm aggressive, but God gave me all of that. I can think more evil than the evil guys, but I'm not going to use the evil. I can get into your shoes, though, to know what your next move is. All right, folks, we're in overdrive with Larry Pinckney, black activist, WG.org. All right, you are getting into the power of humanity. Let's spend five minutes on that and then come back the final segment with you live here, getting into solutions. Larry Pinckney. I want to say that I think that all of us, all of us, uh, men, women, children, black, white, brown, red, yellow, all of us need to understand that if we're going to bring about change, to change things for ourselves individually as well as everyone collectively, that means we have to understand that the power rests with us, not with the government, not with corporations, but with us. We have to begin to communicate with each other. Does that mean we're going to agree 100% of the time? Absolutely not. We don't want robots. We want thinking, feeling human beings. And, and, and I think that's very important. Anybody who's in agreement with someone 100% of the time, somebody's lying. And we don't want liars. We want thinking, critically thinking, acting, doing people. So ultimately, Alex, I feel ultimately that I, I, I see good things in the future. I really do. I see good things happening. When I say good things, I mean people are waking up from being in a state of, 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 of sheeple, if you will. They're waking up to understand that we're the ones who can change our lot, okay? And, and I, to me, that's extremely important because, I, you know, I've heard people say, well, all you guys do, you just, you just talk about all the bad things. Well, we don't just talk about the bad things. We identify those. Well, the world is so beautiful and good. It's because I love all the beauty and the good stuff that the evil that's growing makes me mad. Right. It's like if you have a forest fire out back of your house, hey, don't talk about the fire. Come in and have a beer. What's going to burn our house down if we don't put the fire out? Exactly. Good point. I actually use that example myself when uh, when people criticize me for being on certain programs, including this one, uh, and they, and I ask them, well, what do you think about the substance of what the program was about? Oh, that was good. I said, well, if something does not compute, if that was good, the substance of what the program was about, what is your problem? They said, well, it's just that it's, it's that program. Well, I, I think they don't want the criticism by trolls. They misjudge the trolls attacking means you're doing good work and, and there's nothing to be afraid of. Right. But if you're not being criticized, no one's looking at you. <laughs> I mean, when you get true. big groups of people looking at you, you're going to get attacked. Right, right. That just goes with it. And, and, you know, that's what Brother Malcolm X said, too. He said it in almost exactly the same words. If you're, if you're not doing something for the people, you're not going to get attacked. But if you are, if you're serving the people, rest assured, you're going to be attacked. So we got to look at it from, from that positive. Well, sure, that's what I'm saying is that is that I know I don't have all the answers. I hear stuff I say six months later, don't totally agree with it because it's whatever mindset you're in or how you're saying it. You're like, oh, I wish I would have said it this way. But look, I'm not going to overthink it. They want us to all overthink it while they screw us right. consciously. I'm just trying to get people out of their coma. Right. You don't have to agree with me. Wake up, man. Stuff isn't good. Right. You know, that, right. That, that's when I'm. Get them out of that comatose state. You know, again, I, I, I hearken back to Brother Malcolm. Malcolm talks about how, uh, the, you know, you go to the dentist's office and the dentist shoots you up with Novocaine. Meanwhile, you're bleeding all over the place, but you don't feel it. You don't see it because they've shot you up with Novocaine. That's a good analogy. I didn't know he did. It's perfect. Yeah, that, that was Malcolm. Or deadened. Analogy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh. And, you know, and, and, and then I say get rid of the deadening or you say it. Right. You're, and you're, you're causing pain. <laughs> no, I'm getting the deadening away so you know what's going on. Exactly. And can therefore do something about it. 
and you know, it's like the analogy you used about the house. If the house is on fire and the neighbor says, well, forget that. Come, let's have a beer. Well, I like beer, but come on. The house is on fire for crying <laughs> out loud. That's a great analogy yourself. Well, no, I mean, I liken it to banging on somebody's door and going, hey, your house is on fire. And they go, don't be so negative. <laughs> and I'm like, exactly. I mean, it's exactly. like, you know. <laughs> That's very good. I'm sorry. That is. I mean, they started setting up police checkpoints on the highway, searching everybody like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. People sued. They got upset. They ruled against it. They quit it. Mm -hmm. Now they're back. It's like, don't be anti-police. I'm not anti-police. Right. Right, right. A country that has checkpoints is North Korea or Mexico. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've been to Mexico when you're driving to go see the pyramids and the military pulls over the bus and shakes the driver down and the driver gets on and is crying because they just robbed his wallet. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to live like that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Thank you so much for joining us. Larry Pinckney, uh, the, I guess the information minister at one point for the Black Panther Party, a minister of the interior. Uh, just a really interesting uh, political mind. He was getting into the power of the people and that we have the power. And we were talking about getting people out of their comas and other solutions. In this 12 minutes, uh, you've got the floor, my friend. Uh, break down solutions, ideas uh, for people out there. Right, right. And let me just say that um, just uh, historically, I want to be, be, be very correct about this. I was Minister of Interior for the Republic of Af uh, New Africa, RNA, as we called it. Yeah, I can't keep track yeah, of it all. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I was in it, and I still have a go for me. <laughs> all right, I was a section leader in, in, in the Black Panther Party. I'm a veteran of the party, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, the point is this. The people in this country, the people in this country have to be creative. We have to come up with our solutions. You remember in the first segment we were talking about Malcolm's analogy about the Novocaine being shot in people's gums, making us numb so we don't see or feel our pain. What we need to do after we get that Novocaine out, and what do I mean by that? I mean after we stop being couch potatoes, after we stop being disillusioned, after we stop uh, of being divided, and begin to understand. Start taking it personal, the globalists are screwing us, right. instead of fighting with each other. That's right. That's right. That's, that's point one. And you know what? We can do that in a heartbeat. Individually and collectively, we can do that in a heartbeat. Is it easy? It's easier than you think. No. If somebody easy. tries to push you around and rob your rights, you need to take it personal. They're trying to rob you of your most precious possession that a lot of people have fought and died for. Right, right. And one of the things I have learned, and I'm still learning, I'm always learning, but one of the things that I have learned, especially in the last, I'd say, three to four years, uh, despite all of my political background and organizing and blah, 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 I have learned that it is important for me to reach out to other people, especially those people who don't think like me. Oh, no, they want to keep us in boxes. Right, right. Okay. And, and I've learned that it's important for me to listen to that perspective. Because if I listen closely enough, I find out that there's a kernel in there that I agree with. I may not understand everything that someone is saying, but I got where the, I, I can get where they're coming from. I can understand their pain because I feel that. And that's enlightening. Did you? Yes, yes, and empowering. I hate that word because it's so overused and, 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 not, and, and misunderstood. But in the real sense of empowerment, that's empowering. Because when I, and I'm talking about from personal experience, you know, uh, Alex, three, four years ago, if someone had said to me, you know, you're going to be uh, uh, speaking on, uh, uh, with Alex Jones, I looked at them and I said, hmm, really? But the more I began to pay attention to InfoWars, and it is a war on for our minds. It is. I looked at that. I said, my God. That is correct. It's a war on for our minds. And when we understand this, we understand that we've got to do something about it. It's one thing to say, okay, it's a war on for our minds, but that's what you're doing. That's what InfoWars is doing. That's what the entire crew here at InfoWars is doing. Putting it out. Food for thought. Everyone's heard that expression. Food for thought. So solutions. Solutions. The solutions will not come from the top. They will come from the bottom. They will come from us. If we, if we visualize a pyramid, what holds up that pyramid? That's why the system is obsessed with anything that's really grassroots and tries to take it over. That's right. Because the power is really there. That's right. And they know it. All right. The system knows it. The point is, it's time for us. That's why they're so scared of citizens with cameras and want to intimidate that. Yes. And by the way, doesn't matter. And you're so right. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Alex. You're so right. 
It doesn't matter what their ideology is or ideology is. What the, I'm talking about this, these citizens with the cameras. They don't care. Right wing, left wing, liberal, whatever they call themselves. If you've got a camera, they're threatened. And they're not threatened by a big news truck ever because mm -hmm. they know that's on a leash. Yeah, they, they control that. ABC, NBC, Fox, PBS. Hey, who cares? It's Rob Dew got arrested on a hilltop in Pittsburgh with the media showing them attacking peaceful demonstrators after the G20. And they came up the hill and, and got everybody that was mainstream media and said, you can go. And they, said, and they arrested Dew and roughed him up. He mm -hmm. won a lawsuit against him. Good but thing. you're like, oh, you're with InfoWars? You're going to jail, mm -hmm. buddy. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That says that InfoWars is doing something right in a big way. Right, correct, human. That's, that's what I mean when I say the people struggle. I say keep it up. Kudos to Rob. Well, it shows the sides, though. It shows that they knew. Mainstream media is with us. Right. He, see, he's there with this, another expensive camera up on a hill just like they were. You're going to jail. Mm -hmm. We got mm -hmm. the video. They go, get on your knees mm -hmm. in America. And, and, and G20's over for half a day. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to go to attack some 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 college kids that were out in the park. Of course, of course, and 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 of course, the the, the narrative is always reverse, isn't it? Think about it. It's the college kids. It's sort of like when when when. And I'm not I'm not saying this to all cops, but I personally experienced, and I know many many people of all colors have experienced. It's like when some cops beat you up, then you end up charged with assault. Oh, it's on video all the time. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, but a sense of humor. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like, man, you're going to beat me up. That's one thing. But then you're going to bear false witness. Right. You're going to charge me with beating myself up. You know, it's like, <laughs> wow, that's deep. You know, but but and they'll still do it when there's footage of it. Yes. Yes. And the jury will go, well, you did raise your arm after he'd already hit you five times. That's assault <coughs> to block the blow. Yes. Have you seen the new things where people are convicted where the cop's fist hits you so his fist gets hurt and that's assaulting the cop? Woo! No, no, that's like uh, Israel and Syria. Israel's in the uh, Times of Israel. It says Israel will bring down Assad if he retaliates for further airstrikes. And they say, if you respond in any way, we will then carpet bomb you. That is sick. That is Think sick. about it. Well, I'm going to bomb you, and if you respond, we're going to really invade you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is what we want to do anyway. Okay, but if you dare to defend Syria yourself. for two years, just laying there and taking our government and others putting Al Qaeda in. Mm -hmm. You know the good news? Though, I was reading the Israeli papers. Mm -hmm. Half the comments are going, "Why are we funding Al Qaeda?" Exactly. Well, why? I mean, even the Israelis are going, "This is wrong." Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like seeing Syria lay there for two years and take it mm -hmm. is finally getting through to people. It is. It is. And that's <laughs> Syria is smart. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know it's. What they're doing, their tactics, they're definitely smart. They, because they, 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 I think they understood, at least some of them. Well, no, it's uh, admitted Assad reads InfoWars. And yeah, I'm not saying yeah. he's a great guy, but yeah. that's no, come out. It's not a question of great guy, no great guy. It's a question of the people. The people. This is not a struggle in Syria of the people. Al-Qaeda is killing the Alawite minority. Exactly. And the Christian, lining them up and killing them. That's turning all the people. I've talked to you know high-level uh, Sunnis who would be with the Sunnis that are doing this. But they're... But they're uh, they're, they're, they're doing war crimes, so the Syrians are now unifying against it. Right, right. That's the power of the people. It's backfiring. Though. Why yeah. do psychos always think beating us and attacking us is going to intimidate us? Because that's the way they, they, they figure that's what they think. Therefore, that's the way we think. But that's not the way we think. It's not the way we think. And we're not going to accept that narrative. We're going to be creative, and we're going to come up with our own narrative. And, you, you, know, you know, I was thinking as you were talking about Syria, I was also thinking about the same thing happened in Libya. Same thing. Destabilized, and does, am I saying uh, Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi was good or bad? I'm not saying either. Well, he was actually good for Africa. Yeah, yeah. You could say it was for ego or whatever. He gave most of the money to build up infrastructure, and he was actually lifting Africa up. Yes. And he said the government's putting HIV in the shots, which they caught him. Right. I got to say, uh, you know, compared to, uh, the, the fact is he was definitely becoming a good guy. That's why they did it. Yeah, well, and also. Well, I mean, they got his money to invest. He came into the West right, right, said, right. I want to be friends. But see, you destabilize the region. I don't mean you, obviously. No, no, no. There, there, there's, America. There's, there's, uh, yes. There's, this corporate government it destabilizes a region. There's a, there's a method to their madness. It, they are quite insane, by the way. But there's a method to their madness. You destabilize that region. You send it in like a cancer to infest, and, and, uh, to, to infest the area. You, they, the last thing that, you know, the Obamatrons... And the uh, Republicans, Democrats, the last the thing they want, the last thing they want is a stable country, a stable government. But Bush, just like uh, Webster Tarpley and our other guests said, and Professor Griff, 
in Obama Deception 1 that we made five years ago, mm -hmm. or four, yeah, five years ago, is that they got to have a black face to invade with Africon. And we even predicted they're going to take over Libya and then have Al Qaeda attack and then have the West invade Africa to kill Al Qaeda. Mm -hmm. But they won't even kill Al Qaeda. They'll kill the groups they want, knowing Americans can't even find Africa on a map. Exactly. Uh, and so it's like, we're killing Al Qaeda. Yeah. And meanwhile, the government put Al Qaeda in. Right. They developed Al Qaeda. They groomed Al Qaeda. They made Al Qaeda. They created Al Qaeda. And and they arm Al Qaeda. They, they put Al Qaeda in. Right. And then say we're going to invade Africa to get Al Qaeda. And then they don't even go get Al Qaeda. <laughs> they go kill the group fighting Al Qaeda. Of course, of course. And again, I I smile. It's not funny. It's but sick. It's sick. It really. It was an incredible sick. crime against humanity. Yes. To do that to Libya. Yes. And but our power is our power collectively. As a people, black, white, brown, red, yellow people, our power is knowledge. We know this. We know this. So what are we going to do about it? We're going to reach out. We're going to collect, uh, connect with each other. We're going to come up with ways and means. As Brother Malcolm said, we're going to go in the closet. But boy, when we come out of that closet, we're going to be united. And we're going to have our disagreements, but we're going to have them in the closet. Well, I mean, look, it, it's, a, it's a crime to go to a stable country, destroy it, and then engage in ethnic cleansing. Right of black Africans, you know, right, 40,000 right. climbed up and killed so far. Right. Did that wake up the black community to Obama? I noticed it woke up Farrakhan. It, <laughs> yes. To a, I mean, to a certain extent. Yeah. I mean, he came out and criticized his brother Obama when, 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 when they did that in Libya, because that really is a crime. Well, it, it woke up uh, to some degree some other folks too, such as Imari Baraka, former AKA Leroy Jones. Uh, uh, but, you know, we'll see if it was genuine or not. I don't know. I can't say. Now, speaking for everyday, just the everyday black folk, okay, uh, I think it is beginning to have an impact, especially among young blacks who are going, well, wait a minute, something doesn't compute here. We're over here. We're, we're bombing. But somebody's got to tell them. That information has got to be gotten to them. They got to understand Libya is North Africa. They got to understand Somalia is East Africa. They've got to understand that, that what is going on. And, and, and when you look at Syria, where is Syria in relation to Africa? It's, already in, it's, it's, it's not on the African continent, but it's extremely close. But, but again, I'm not from Africa. Well, I guess originally everybody yeah. is. But the point is, I, I, I have empathy. In fact, I would tell young black folks, why do you only care about something in Central Africa? Exactly. I mean, I care about if they're committing a war crime in, in, in Libya or in, or in Syria or in in Jordan or or in the Balkans. Exactly. Exactly. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus the don't tread on me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Final segment with Larry Pinkney. It's, it's hard to get off air with him. And uh, I think you're going to be on the nightly news. So I don't know if Jakari Jackson's doing it or who's doing it, but you're invited to that. I don't want to exhaust you too much. We're going to get some good Austin uh, Pollo Rico uh, here, and then we're going to... Uh, uh, do an interview for Obama Deception too. Obama, as Cynthia McKinney has said, and others, it's not that he's a lesser of two evils, he's a more effective. Mm -hmm. And when the whole evil globalist culture says he's our savior, I knew, oh my gosh, get ready. They're going to be able to run the whole thing here. But, but you know, I, I mean, I knew about some of your early on past Marxist-Leninist type stuff. And people would ask me, why would you have Larry Pinkney on? Because I've watched over the years how you've expanded. You were describing it as populism. You know, seeing these are all tools of control. Uh, what is your view now politically? Because now, you, uh, go ahead. Yeah, well, as, as you and I were talking about, Alex, the bottom line is, yes, I studied Marx-Leninism, Marxist-Leninism, Maoism. Uh, um, yeah, I studied these things. But the more I, I began to, to and, and that doesn't mean that I, I, I don't have some respect for some aspects, but I evolved. And I'm still evolving. I'm evolving into... A, a peopleist, 
a, a populist. You see, any kind of ideology, be it right wing, left wing, or anything. It's always going to go to the individual. Yes. And that's it. But, but it's an individualism where you love the individual, but then it creates a true diverse uh, collectivism, not the false collectivism. Notice the big mega banks are always funding communism, because, just like Carol Quigley said, because it's another central control mm -hmm. like fascism. Mm -hmm. uh, so have you evolved? And I'm not saying I have all the answers, but have you evolved to the fact that it's got to be individual, but individuals have to then band together and, and that basically more of a real libertarian philosophy, not the fake corporatist where it's a corporate collectivism. See, I mean, all these terms mean nothing. Right, right. How would you describe yourself now, then? I would describe myself as as uh, moving very strongly and quickly towards populism, all right? This is why it's so important for me to be able to speak and communicate with anyone from any ideology, any ideology, okay? I, 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 I refuse to uh, be narrow. Oh, it's got to be a Marxist-Leninist. Oh, it's got to be dialectical materialism. Oh, it's got to be. It's like, please. Please. You want to get out of the box. Yes. We've got to all get out of this box if we really want change. Now, if we don't really want change, then stop the BS. Stop the BS. Please, please, please. Be honest and say, I don't really want change. I'm comfortable where I am. I'm, I'm comfortable intellectually masturbating. I like that. Okay, be honest. But no, I believe that if we are going to, 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 to have people change, then we better get the heck out of the box. The sooner the better. Exactly. We don't want to replace one crony capitalist system with a crony communist system. We want to, I mean, I would say, get back to the Enlightenment, the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. It's all about breaking up the cartels and empowering the individual. Right. And that's what they're scared of. Right. They're Carol Quigley said, we like fascism, we like communism, we like socialism, we like it all because we can buy off whoever's in charge. Just like they didn't like Gaddafi because he created a socialism, but it actually delivered 90% of the stuff to the people and built infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They want a communism where it's a bunch of royal commies up in their little command center. Everybody else are slaves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, I think that's a very, very important point that you've just made. You see, any kind of ism, capitalism, communism, socialism, ask yourself what they really mean. W what does that really mean? It means, your description, I'm going to have to keep that one in mind. Watch this program because I like the way you describe that. They want uh, a, 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 a palatial elite if you will. They don't mind if they have a palatial elite, whether they call it communism, capitalism, socialism, whatever other ism they're going to come up with next. But we the people have got to understand that if we are to really empower ourselves, I use that word again, but if we really to empower ourselves, we have to dispense with that. We have to reach out to each other. We have to be honest, which is why I began uh, uh, the, 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 earlier in this program. I began by saying, Alex, where is the so-called left now that drone man Obama is bombing and killing and maiming? Where is he? They where feel like they're in charge now, reflected glory, so they bought into it. Right, right. So what is that? What is that? That's hypocrisy. That's deceit. It's hypocrisy. It's not being principled. We have got to be principled. That's more important than any idiot. Exactly. If a Republican was in charge doing this, I'd be against them. Right. If people say, well, why are you bashing Obama? Well, back when I didn't like Bush, I was a communist. Now I don't like Obama. Uh, I'm a right-wing you know, racist extremist. It's nothing to do with that. I want justice, and I want to get our Bill of Rights and Constitution back, and I want to get true independence back because it creates so much wealth. Our only problem is our kids become decadent slobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, nothing turns loose liberty uh, like people being able to be upwardly mobile. And, I, and, and the mega cartels do everything they can to block that. We're out of time. Larry Pinkney will be back on the nightly news. We're going to exhaust you today. Uh, we're going to interview you for Obama Deception 2 next. And then we're going to get you on the nightly news if you want to do that. And it's just great meeting you in person. Thank you so much. You know I love being here. Absolutely. It's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, black activist, uh, WG.org. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. Go see the Mike Judge teaser. Ah, oh, this is Hank Hill. You need to listen to Alex Jones. That's up on Infowars.com. Visit Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.